Hi and thanks for tuning in for part one of this Essential RC Aero Tetris SR71 Blackbird build. Part one of I don't know how many, I suspect it's going to be a few, 10, 50, 100, I don't know, but I do know it's going to be quite a time consuming process and I don't mind that because this is going to be a fantastic SR71 Blackbird that you can't get on the market I don't think from anyone else, not in this size, not as a ready to fly. There are other people, we saw one at Elana Treffin, this guy had built one from scratch and it was magnificent. Um, although composite, I think, wood structures as well. But this uh, from Aero Tetris is basically 2.8 meters long, classic SR71 Blackbird. You get the, what you're paying for are six layers of, of foam that are precision cut into these individual pieces. Now, what you have to do first, first step, you, you get these from Igor Aero Tetris. When you see the codes there, the codes do not come printed on these pieces. You have to transpose those. Now I've done it for this first layer on top. That took about an hour, so I've got to do it for the other five layers. When I've done that, then I can get, I've bought some uh, tubs, plastic tubs, and I can separate the groups of pieces into those separate tubs. It pays to be organized apparently with this. So on top here, this top layer, I've got EG, EG and F1F. So I separate out into two tubs um, that, and then do that for the other. So I'm gonna end up with maybe 12 tubs of components. Uh, when I've got that, I can, when I've done that, I can start building up the parts of the cross section. So I reckon each, uh, what we've got there is about a third or a half of a cross section. Glue those three pieces together to make that. So in three or four or five in some cases. So we've got F1102, four, three and one, four pieces to make up this particular section, then you glue some of those together. And then when you've got those cross sections, then you need to sandwich them together and you use a carbon tube as a, as a guide to make sure it's all aligned. And you sandwich those together and you start building up the wings, start building up the fuselage, start building up those engine thrust tubes as well. Um, and then you end up with your SR71 Blackbird and as you're doing that, I'm sure I'm going to be thinking about power system, electronics, servos, what servos am I going to put in this? I've got to cut control surfaces. Um, uh, what else? I've got to think about the scheme. It's going to be predominantly black, but I'm going to put some nice um, decals on it, maybe from Calligraphics. So this is all a long time off, uh, but this first step is going to take me a few hours to uh, transpose the codes onto all of the pieces and then we'll be ready to put parts of the cross sections together. So bear with me, I should be back in a few hours. Might have gone slightly mad by then, but I will be back in a few hours. Okay, so there we go. After several hours, many hours actually, of the mundane, boring and time-consuming task of labelling each of the pieces in those six layers. I think 850, it said. I, I didn't count them. I was up till two o'clock last night doing this and then I just passed out and I was up at six o'clock again, starting again. But I've got it done and I'm thrilled about that because I think this is probably the worst part um, psychologically of this whole project and I wanted to get it out of the way as rapidly as possible. So this is what you end up with, pieces like this. This is F1F 1904. No idea where that fits into this mega jigsaw puzzle but that is one of 850 pieces and then you've got WSW1 0902 which is no doubt part of a wing. Um, and you can see all the rest of it. Now the important thing is when you break apart the pieces out of their layers and you end up with disposing quite a lot of spare foam that you don't need um, that you separate them into these containers by their major component whether it be WS or EG FS or, or whatever it's important to keep those separate because when you work on these individual components you won't have to hunt around so you, no doubt I'm gonna have to lay all this out on the floor on a uh, on each of these on the floor and then start assembling 
these individual um, cross sections or part cross sections and then total cross sections and then sandwiching them together for the fuselage, for the wings and for the engine bays and other components. So uh, advice, the advice, uh, only not much advice I can give on this particular stage, but you do have to be very careful. It's time consuming. Make sure that you label everything correctly. That means double and triple checking each layer as you've labeled it up. Maybe get someone else to, to do that for you. Just scan quickly to make sure you haven't missed anything. Because the worst thing, and I really hope I haven't done this, is that I, uh, my fear would be that I've thrown away something that I didn't label or that I've mislabeled something. The worst thing would be if I've thrown away something that I need. Oh, I really hope I haven't done that after investing all of this time. Um, uh, printing out the sheets on A3 is another thing because they, the part numbers are quite small and you don't want to be straining your eyes while you're doing that. But otherwise, just, it's, just be careful. It's time consuming, appreciate that. Uh, you get through that and I'm sure the build is going to be more fun in the later stages. <laughs> I really hope it is because this has been, uh, this was uh, really testing me in the early hours of the morning. So, uh, so there you go. Thanks for watching this one. This is part one, I suspect, of several. I did tell you it's going to be a long process, but I think it's kind of fun. Uh, uh, secondary project of mine to have running in the background of all the other stuff I do on Essential RC. So thanks for tuning in this one. Hope we see you for the next one. Take care.